In this session, we want to understand the definition and the calculations of variance and standard deviation. Now, there are uh, two flavors to each of them, and both variance and standard deviation, they are related to each other. So in some sense, it is just one notion that we are learning today. What is the variance? Okay. Now, variance, there is a population variance version and a sample variance version that we need to know about. And of course, the ideas are very simple because uh, if we have a population of data, a bag of measurements that describes uh, the entire population of items that we are interested to find out, then we use sigma squared to indicate the variance of the population. And the random variable x here uh, will, of course, has to have to be a population or represents a population. And if the random variable x uh, represents a subset of the population, a sample instead, then we write variance, subscript sample, just to emphasize it, because x alone uh, doesn't it's not very clear about whether it is population or, or, or sample because it can represent both. So we write variance sample uh, of x. And when we do that, x cannot be then a population of data. So they have to uh, agree with each other and you cannot be writing uh, population variance of a x where x is a subset of the population, it's a sample. It, it wouldn't be right to say that. So they have to agree, right? And as a, as a symbol, we'll write S square. And the little square here, uh, why don't we just write, you know, a, a symbol rather than the square of a symbol is because if you take the square root, quickly you find that it is uh, also having a meaning and it's called standard deviation. So uh, sigma is the standard deviation or rather the population standard deviation of the random variable X that represents a population. And little s, okay, is the sample standard deviation of the random variable x, which must represent a sample of measurements. So now that these symbols are clear, of course, then the immediate relationship between standard deviation and variance is that variance is the square of standard deviation for both population version and the sample version. Yeah, so uh, the mathematics is clear. We just square the standard deviation. Doesn't matter is whether it's a population or sample. We just square the uh, <clears throat> standard deviation and we'll get the corresponding variance. All right, uh, if it's population, then population variance. If it's sample, then sample variance. So the connection is very simple and uh, before we get into the calculation details, uh, idea is that variance, although it's so easily related to the standard deviation, they've got little slightly different uh, pros and cons, right? So the pros of having or working with variance is that it's very nice. <laughs> the, the nice here is different from your idea of nice, right? It's like, wow, this is so complicated, right? But uh, nice because it's just square, all right, and it's got summation, which is adding up rather than minusing, rather than dividing, and rather than taking the reciprocal root of a power and so on, right? So it's got very uh, nice property. And this one over n sum of n items, that just reminds us that it is an average, right? So it's the average of all the squares of individual data points deviating from the mean. Yeah, so, so that's, that's basically it. And the property of this is very nice because it's mathematically easy to operate. For example, you can expand it and it becomes 2xi squared minus, I'm sorry, no, it is xi squared minus 2xi times mu plus mu squared. So we can easily expand out the terms and break apart and make it have uh, three summations of the terms and simplify everything to arrive at this very useful uh, working formula, right? We call this the defining formula and this, uh, the right side, the working formula. Uh, when we actually compute using calculator, uh, Excel, Python, or whatever package you have in, in computers, uh, typically it would be uh, 
uh, sort of uh, calculated this way. And in certain other cases where you know higher precision is required, we may also consider using this way. But this is a, a nice uh, kind of insight where we say, hey, look, actually, you know what? The average of all the squares minus the square of the averages <laughs> is going to be the variance, right? So, so there's one saying that goes uh, sort of relieving you, helping you to memorize the formula nicely is the mean, right? Because one over n times sum of n items, right? So that's averaging, right? So the mean of all the squares of the data minus the square of the mean of all the data, because mu is population mean, right, of all the data, uh, will give us the variance of the population. So uh, this is an insight that is easily derivable if we, you know, analyze this def defining formula a little bit more. It's not difficult, but if uh, uh, that's not your cup of tea, that's fine. Just take it that they are exactly equal all the time for whatever data, right? So that's very nice. So variance has got nice mathematical properties. Uh, and why do we take square root to make it not nice, right? Because square root, most of the time, you get a lot of decimal places and uh, it's just ugly and mathematically not very attractive. You've got to square it back, then you can get rid of this huge roof on top, right? Uh, well, because when we report variance numbers to people, especially human readers rather than computers, um, it is much more preferred to report in terms of standard deviation than variance. Why is that? Because variance, uh, let's take stock price fluctuations as an example. When stock prices fluctuate, all right, there's a sense of in the middle, that's the average price, right, about which the price goes up and goes down uh, by the minute or by the hour. So if, if the stock price fluctuates a lot up and down about the mean value, then our variance will be very large. And of course, so will the standard deviation. Because it's, it's like the higher, the higher, right? And the lower, the lower. So it's very uh, in sync. However, the variance will likely be a very large number. So if it is fluctuating by 10 cents, variance will be 100. So it's 10 squared, right? Let's say. So uh, instead of reporting 100 cents, we might as well take the square root and report 10 cents. In fact, it's not 10, it's, it's not 100 cents variance. It's 100 cents squared. So if I were to tell you, you know what? This stock is really uh, fluctuating a lot. Uh, do you want to trim your losses or control your uh, portfolio a little bit? Uh, and then I, uh, why is that? Oh, because the variance is 100 cents squared you wouldn't know how to interpret that, at least not immediately, and maybe not for a long time as well, because square of sense is just weird, right? We don't deal with it on a daily basis. But if I were to report to you and say, you know what, this stock price is fluctuating quite rapidly, I think uh, to be safe, shall we revisit our portfolio? Uh, why is that? Oh, because the standard deviation is 10 cents. Okay, then you start to think, okay, so if the mean stock price is $1, then 10 cents, let me just think of it, all right? It, it's not the same, but let me think of it as if it is plus minus 10 cents. Uh, well, okay, yeah, that's about 10%, right? Okay, I think I probably can't take that risk, so I can do something about it. So you see that it's easier to understand uh, when we report standard deviation rather than uh, variance. The numbers are smaller, and also the units are correct. It's the same as the measurement unit. So if you measure the stock price in cents, how many hundreds of cents, then the standard deviation will be in cents, not cents squared, as in the case if you do it in variance. So likewise with speed, kilometers per hour, your standard deviation will be kilometers per hour <laughs> rather than kilometers per hour squared. And I have no idea what that means. It's like kilometers squared divided by hour squared, right? So very uh, hard to interpret, very large numbers will be the downside of variance. The plus side of variance, very nice mathematical properties, uh, very easy to manipulate. And um, therefore, we love to have insights on the mathematical front. But in practical uh, usage of variance, we better use uh, the numerical version, all right, the, the, the standard deviation version 
of variance. So we take the square root of variance, we get the standard deviation, and we report it with the same unit as the measurement, which is nice, easy to interpret and use. So those properties, pros and cons, go with uh, both population variance and sta sample variance as for population standard deviation and sample standard deviation. Then why sample standard deviation? Well, uh, the mathematics is such that instead of dividing by capital N, can remember capital N represents the entire population's count. Yeah? And little n is a standard notation used to represent the size of the sample. Remember, we talked about population and sample and sample size, right? So uh, <clears throat> to be mathematically uh, correct in the sense that we, we have a uh, unbiased, that is to say we are neither leaning towards the higher estimate or lower estimate and uh, you know we can show that it is basically not having a tendency to be showing a larger number or showing a smaller number and that's called unbiased. So we need to divide by n minus 1. All right. So uh, other than that it is also the square of the deviation of data points right from the mean from the sample mean now remember we don't use mu here mu is the population mean x little bar little x bar is the sample mean and the point is that uh, when we calculate sample variance we oftentimes wouldn't know the population mean and of course we wouldn't know the population variance right because that's the whole point uh, why we want to sample and take the sample measurements in the first place. So we have no idea about the population mean and variance, but we love to know them. So we collected some samples and those are the little xi's and the little n would be a far smaller number than capital N. So imagine capital N is 1 million, too large for us to, to measure, too costly. Uh, we'll select n equals to 10. All right, so we randomly select 10 uh, samples and measure them to get 10 xi, so x1, x2, x3 until x10. And then we calculate those 10 numbers averages, right? We get one number called x bar, so the average of all the 10 numbers. And we start calculating the differences from that. Then we square the differences, all right? And then we take, roughly speaking, the average because we add up, if we divide it by n itself, then we are taking the average. However, we are dividing by n minus 1. So the, 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 the intention is to take the average, but to be mathematically correct, we need to divide by n minus 1. So thinking-wise, you can think of it as if we are still doing like averaging. And therefore, the, the formula is really similar. However, when you actually calculate, the numbers will be slightly different, right? Because we are dividing by n minus 1. So if we uh, again expand the middle term here, so we get xi square minus 2xi x bar plus x bar square. And then we break out the three terms with three summations and simplify everything. Uh, it, it's just a long, you know, mess of uh, algebraic operations. Then you will come to this simplification, which is kind of vaguely similar to the above, where we have like nearly the average of all the square of data items, right? We should divide by little n again, but we divide by n minus one. And then here, we want to uh, square the sample mean, but multiplied by a correction factor, n over n minus one. So this is a strict equality. It's not approximation. Huh? So for any set of data, sample data, left-hand side and right-hand side will always equal to each 